Last time, Mark polished off the reconstruction of the 444 barrel for the 1970 Plum Crazy Challenger. On this episode, the ghouls begin the drivetrain assembly for a 1970 Limelight Tribute Superbird and the 1970 Plum Crazy Challenger. While Mark inspects a new location for a Mopar car dealership. They're coming to get you, Barbara. I'm Mark Warman, and together we bring dead muscle cars back to life, to exactly the way they were on the day they were born. This car started life at Graveyard Cars as a rusty hole we got from Tony. It was originally a Roadrunner 383 automatic. We have converted it into the beautiful Superbird tribute car you see before you. It's time to put the muscle behind the hustle. That's a 446 barrel Hemi four speed with a 354 Dana. Don't miss it. Now, put, the, put that on and adjust it. Right. Pull up tight on your face. Uh, so right now in the booth, I have Landsberg's 1970 Challenger. This is the one that's the SE, gets a small rear window in the back. It's a pretty cool car. Uh, Alyssa's in here. She's actually stepped up quite a bit, wanting to do more out here, but I told her for her to actually be a part of what I do, I need her here first thing in the morning, ready to help. So she showed up right at eight o'clock. I got her in a paint suit, respirator, She's in the booth and we're getting ready to go in and start painting this car together. <laughs> if it was a pre-paint, you could paint it. Old Alyssa, you know, she probably wasn't gonna pay attention much and it would be hard getting her to actually understand what we're doing. But just the fact of her showing up at eight o'clock in the morning speaks volumes. So I think she's here, she's focused, she's ready to actually learn what I do and I think we're gonna come out great on it. Can't mess it up too bad. Yeah, you can. Oh, okay. So if we don't have enough cars already, we have a new car arriving at the graveyard today. It's a beautiful 70 Super B uh, owned by Ledford. Yeah, 1970, the Super B was extremely popular. I mean, of course, you had your E-bodies, your 70 Cuda, your 70 Challenger, but as far as B-body goes, this was the car to have. The Super B was so popular by 1970. So, I mean, as you can see in the yard, we got like 10 of these out here. And I mean, most of them are plum crazy purple, so it's really cool having this B5 blue car, but super, super popular car. First thing I want to do is pop the hood open on it. So the first place I go and look is, of course, the fender tag. Fender tag's got all kinds of cool stuff. First thing I notice right off the bat is the V-code. So the V-code shows it's a 446 pack car, which is amazing. Then I see that D21 on there. You know, it's a four-speed car without even looking at it. So, I mean, those are the two top cool options. And then, of course, I look. There's the A33, which is a track pack car. A34 would be better if it was a super track pack car, but it's still got a Dana 60 and a 354 gear ratio. So I mean, right there, those three things, 446 barrel, four speed, track pack car, things freaking awesome. Then of course, this B5 blue. I just wanted to verify the paint code because a lot of times the cars will come in and it's blue, but that paint code will say FC7. So you know, it might be plum crazy purple, but I'm glad it's a B5 blue car, blue interior. So it's something different in the shop, which is really awesome. And I'm sure Will's gonna love to shoot some B5 on this car. So can't wait to get this baby in the assembly room. Dave to the office, please. Mr. David Ray, numero uno to the office. At your convenience. Just kidding, I need you in here right away. All right, so 
let that sit for a couple more minutes. Yep. So it looks like everything is good. Let that dry, go back in there. Then I'll probably just have to do a couple of back-to-back -back coats. Then we should be done with color. Make sure you bring the original building plans for it and that level one that you had done. Uh, also, on the plumbing, I want to make sure that all the plumbing is the way it's supposed to be, that it matches, because I know it's on a septic tank and a well, so I just think that it'd be a good idea to be able to look at all that stuff at one time. So, it's got, uh, you know, it's got the cars lined up around the building. We have some really cool parking lot lighting. We're going to get... Dodge will probably, I'll probably be able to get Mopar to sign off on the on the signage out front, because obviously we don't want a real dealership, a new car dealership to be confused with it, so. Yeah, no, I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Yeah, all right. Okay, I'll see you out there in like, uh, maybe 45 minutes. Okay, oh, hey, 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 hey. Hey, hang on. Hey. <clears throat> you ever see used cars with Kurt Russell? <laughs> no, no, no. The fishing pole with the $20 and he skates the guy from across the street, right? Puts it on there and he casts it across there and that poor guy runs over and he ends up hitting his head on the side of the Buick. That's just funny stuff. That's a Zemeckis film. Okay. All right. See you, man. Yeah, I'll be out there. <laughs> Bye. Hey, boss. What'd you need? You page me. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. You probably noticed what I was talking to the guy that about. That was awesome. It looks amazing. Is that That's going to be so yeah, cool. That's going to be so cool. Only one place in the world. Green your card, That's baby. It. Yeah. Oh, I need to take off, and I don't know how long this is going to be, because I also got to go to uh, County Records after that. I may be gone all day. Okay. So I am going to put you in charge. Oh, really? really? You can handle it, yeah. Oh, now, this right. is your first, I, I made the mistake in the past of putting people in charge. D-Day, we're gonna drive the car, it's D's day today. My day. One, two, here, wait, three! Ah! No way! I came back at the end of the day and nothing was done. <laughs> Don't rough me up now. I have a feeling that won't be the case with you. Okay, no, it will not be the case. Number here. one's in charge. Number one's in charge. <laughs> I need number one to get the drivetrain put in our Superbird and, and in the victim's car. Okay. If you can get those two things done, just round up whoever you need. We've got, you know, people all over the place. Gotcha. Um, if you can get those done, that would be great. Okay. Uh, I've got my phone, so you can just give me a call, whatever you need to do. Awesome. Remember now, it's the victim's car, so he's watching from somewhere. I know, I Don't know. Don't scratch That's... my paint, buddy. <laughs> Don't hurt my paint. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay? No, we'll take care of it. Sounds good, buddy. Awesome. Thanks, boss. Uh, so I guess Dave has just come over to form Delissa. Mark is out looking at some new building. I'm not sure what that's about, but apparently Dave needs help installing a drivetrain. So while this car sits in here and gets completely dry, Alyssa and I are going to bounce over to Dave and then help him get it all installed. It's cool. So yeah, well, your dad's out looking at uh, Graveyard Motors, so let's go ahead and start with fuel lines, which you've helped me with before. Okay. Fuel lines, brake lines underneath the car, then we'll worry about the engine department. Sound good? Yeah, sounds good. All right, let's just do it. On this particular car, we got two lines. So we got a main fuel line, which is this 3 8 line, and then we got a vapor return line, which will be this quarter inch line. Okay. See the tape lines on that mark? Uh, mark. Mark. Well, sorry, Starting buddy. Starting it already? Oh, that <laughs> almost got me cussing. <laughs> Coming up, the ghouls band together to get the drivetrain installed for the Plum Crazy Challenger and the Limelight Tribute Superbird, while Mark heads across town to inspect a new lot for a Mopar car dealership. Uh, Will, Liz, and I are, are actually going to install the brake lines and the fuel lines in our 70 Superbird Tribute car. Um, I, don't, I don't know the, the details on the fuel lines or any of the stuff that I'm over here helping Dave. I just know that because we do OE cars, everything just clips into place. So when Dave says do the fuel lines, he can just show me where they go. I put the little clips on them, clip them into the uh, inside of the quarter panel and whatnot, and it's done. So that's the extent of my knowledge on, oh, and they hold fuel. So that's my knowledge. We're going to feed this quarter inch 
has got to go same side? the exact same okay. way. Yep, exact same way. Through the same hole? Yep, through the same hole and everything. It's just going to piggyback on that one. I always try to put in all the fuel lines and the brake lines before the drivetrain. It just, it's a little bit harder to maneuver the lines around. You're taking a chance of actually hitting the side of the car and scratching the paint. All right, and the bad part about painting all the undercoating is trying to find all the holes. Oh, is that what we're looking yeah, for? Yeah, there's a bunch of holes in there. So I got all the clips here. Yeah, a lot of times Will ends up putting too much undercoating underneath the car. The fuel line clips are a pain to get in there. They'll end up plugging up all the holes and everything else. Well, you just went crazy with undercoating. What I do, the nice factory, beautiful <laughs> job of undercoating. I actually don't put on as much as Mark would like. But these cars, factory, man, they put a lot of undercoating underneath these things. So I actually do way less than what factory did. So she'll just have to deal with it and find the holes. <laughs> so now I'll get you the, we'll have Will put on the piggyback clips. How, how far together. apart do they go? Uh, just, I, I kind of do factory. them like every. You know, it's funny, because when Alyssa's in my area, she's actually being really good. But she comes over here to Dave's area, then she starts picking on me, doing all her normal routine. But I'm not going to engage with her this season. I'm just gonna be nice to her, I'm gonna let her do her thing, and I'm gonna be the mature one. Had a great comment, but I'm not gonna do it. Not gonna do it? Nope. I'm, I'm trying to watch my mouth, and I'm not flipping off the camera anymore. You guys screwed me over last year when I flipped off the camera, then you used it for like 10 episodes. My mom calls, she's upset, she, you know, because she doesn't realize it's the same thing being replayed. So now I'm trying to keep my mouth very clean and no more, uh, no more flipping you guys off. This is season seven. Uh, season eight, seven man. and we're friends. Oh, season, okay, this is season eight. You got some more or no? <laughs> I hate that shirt. I hate that magic hat shirt. Uh, you know, she, she made that up last season, took that down to Vegas, embarrassed the hell out of me down there. I am over that shirt. I'm glad it was only a one and done situation. I still have to get her back for that. I just don't know how yet. All right. Okay, you ready? Yep. Okay. So we're gonna do same, same thing this way, Will. All right, buddy, and then It'll Which go hole? through that, that one? one that's beveled. See the beveled? Oh, right here. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, ooh, cool. How far does it come through? It'll go through. Same way the other Yep, okay. just until it bottoms out on that bend. You got it, buddy. Yeah, I mean, uh, putting the fuel lines in and stuff is, is more like babysitting, because Will and Annalisa are like brother and sister, and they're just bickering and fighting and pulling each other's hair and, and stuff. So it's, it's more of uh, me doing all the work and listening to them rant and rave the whole time. All right, come on. All righty. Yeah, and then that's got to actually go see this little deal. Oh! <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> ah. You know, the spray paint on this shirt's great. Uh, the unfortunate thing is I didn't get it quite good enough, but it's still, hopefully, it's, it's at least ruined the shirt to where when she washes it, it doesn't look good, and she'll just quit wearing it. If she pulls it out again, I'm going to have to spray paint it again. Dave? Still see your, yeah. your beautiful yep. smile. Oh, I'm and not, you have to. Oh, I'm not done then. No, not done. <laughs> this has got him. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I did the last ones. All right, I gotta get a light. Where did I put my light? Hey! <laughs> I had to do that one. God, I can't my hand. The reach around. <laughs> well, it's not a reach around. That was a reach around. <laughs> I didn't do a reach around. I just reached around Alyssa to spray paint the shirt. I like the way you guys put the questions, too. <laughs> I can't even... <laughs> I just give Alyssa a reach around. Right? <laughs> yeah, see, they, 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 they <laughs> you. Oh, see, you got to be cussing again. Now that'll make, like, season 10. All right, so that's our brake lines, that's our fuel cool. line, and our vapor return line. So. We're ready to come down and do the inch compartment. This is cool. Take a look at that. That's exactly what I was looking for, that 70s dealership kind of a look. It was built in 1970, according to the owner. Look at that freeway exposure. You're cruising down the freeway. You look over, you see a 70 Hemi Cuda convertible setting up there, spinning around. Graveyard Motors. Picture right out front, right there, a 20-foot tall rocking chair like Jerry's Cherries from American Graffiti. Slides out of that thing, somebody comes in looking for a car. What can I help you with? You're down here at old Honest Mark's used car. Come on down. This place hasn't been touched since it was built. Look at that wood. Look at this, this is perfect. I mean, it needs some paint and finish work on it. It looks like it had some repairs up there. 
You got the big roll up door right there that you could use. A 20 by 20 door right there, you can get anything in here. Looks like you could probably get four cars, maybe-ish, five. Maybe four or five right in that area. You know, I, I don't mind helping Dave, but, but it's hell, you know? It's all these little nuts, bolts, clips, fasteners. It's just boring, I don't like doing it. But I'm also a team player, and Dave asked for help, so I will do that for him. Make sure everything's going to stay straight, like that, like that, like that. Beautiful. OK. It's the bottom of the ninth. <laughs> we're, we're like down one run. We're just <laughs> okay. getting ready to slam it. And George just runs across the, the field naked. Oh my god. I, I don't know why Dave would ever reference anything about George being naked running across the football field, but I don't need that image. What Dave and George do on their time is their business. Has zero to do with me. I just really don't need to hear about it. It just yeah. stopped everything. Yeah. That's, that's, what, that's where we're at. You mean BCG? I noticed there's some plugs that the body guys filled in in the firewall. Of course, extra work for me. So I'm going to have to get all these drilled out so I can get all my firewall built out. So I'm just going to send these guys to lunch do what I do best, fix everybody else's mistake, and uh, get it done. Cool. That's Break. Good. All right. Break. Sounds good to me. Some say the 1968 Super Stock Hemi Dodge Darts and Plymouth Barracudas were the fastest muscle cars of all times. These cars were modified for drag racing and even came with a warranty disclaimer and also a sticker saying not for use on public roads. In both cases, these cars were sent to another location for modifications. So where were these cars sent? Was it Hearst Performance, Chrysler Corporation, or Creative Industries? The answer is coming up after the break. So where were the 1968 Hemi Dodge Darts and Plymouth Barracudas converted from normal production cars to super stock models? The answer is Hearst Performance. The modifications for both these cars included an actual reduction in weight, including acid dipping of front bumpers and actual sheet metal. It also included fiberglass fenders, fiberglass hood, plexiglass windows. It also had an A100 van seat. The end result is both these cars could actually run the quarter mile in about 10 seconds. Not bad for something you can get in your local dealership. Okay, it's broken. How can I help you? What you come in for, boy? What you looking for? The new Challenger? Well, it's got concealed headlights, got a racing hood on it, racing stripes. Make you a hell of a deal on that, boy. Where are you from, boy? Wisconsin. You're from Wisconsin. You know only two things come out of Wisconsin. Cheese and people. G-rated. Look at this room. Nobody's done anything with this room since 1970. Still got the fluorescent lights in it. They're probably not even the T8s. They're those old T12 things. That is so cool. So literally, I mean, you could do detailing. That carpet may have to go. I want to get some shag carpeting, some orange shag. Does that look killer or what? Maybe see if I, they'll leave that in that orange chair. Those are perfect. I love it. What's up, D? Hey, about time you showed up. You ready to? <laughs> Need to clean out the buffet. Poop it and dupe it? Oh my god. Yeah, let's poop it and dupe it. <laughs> All right. So grab the rear end? The rear end, exactly. Okay. Right, oh, Will's on it, man. He's like, I ain't missing working? around. Well, Alyssa and I went and had a few drinks at lunch. Did you? Yeah. Right on. <laughs> no. Alyssa. You that on your own. Alyssa. Yeah, if you want to, it's up to you. OK. Hey, guys, grow up. Let's do this. This is awesome. 70 Superbird Limelight paint code. I got to pull the mark thing going here. <laughs> Tribute F <laughs> J. Five, six. Cinco, five. 
Yep, limelight for Plymouth, 446 barrel. We were doing four so good. speed. <laughs> we were doing track pack. I was, thinking, 60. I was thinking without Mark, man. Boom, boom. Ah, see that? Yeah. He's trying to fire you Knock guys. It okay. Anyway, so we're ready to go. <laughs> Sorry, Nate. Uh, feels great to be in charge of the shop. After all, I am number one. So uh, going, uh, being in charge is just, it's just natural for me. Oh, look at this. Little service shop here. Bring those old graveyard cars in here. Hell yeah. Get a little, get a couple of lifts in here. Recon your used cars, batteries, tires, accessories. You know, need a little minor repair to them. A little parts loft up there, looks like. Another parts loft up there. Well, this would be perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. What do you think? Nice and bright. Looks like it's got blinds though on all of them. That's a good thing. This area is cool. You could park cars up. That's every bit of 20 feet right there. You could, you could also back cars right up there and display them. Get some like 70s memorabilia type of stuff, Coke machine or something like that. Oh, you know what else is cool? Just dawned on me. You'll love this. All right. Tell me where you're in forward. I, I can't go any for, or forward. Keep going. Keep going. I man. can't. Keep going? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right there. Did you go down any? Oh, sweet. What are you doing? You guys always Do we need to it widen out. it out a little bit. This is one of those times. Lower it down more. Uh, so, right now, we're trying to get this rear end installed. And let's just say, right now, it's not going that good. Okay, get yours in. And get just a couple nuts on it. Okay, you need to still go down, don't you, Lissa? Yeah. yeah. All right, coming down. Okay, hold on. Whoa, whoa, up, up, up. Hey. All right, are you guys ready? Okay, let's go. The 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona and the 1970 Superbird were some of the most aerodynamic cars of their time. But did you know that Chrysler started experimenting with aerodynamics in the 1920s? However, many of the early aerodynamic test results didn't end up on a car until the Daytona and Superbird were developed, which ended up reducing their drag despite being built on an existing model with relatively few changes. And not all testing took place in a wind tunnel. Instead, they test on an airport runway, bring it to top speed, place it in neutral, and measure the time it took to slow down to get a rough measure of drag under real life conditions. It's because of the aerodynamic additions that the Daytona and Superbird came to be regarded as ugly. But today, they're hard to come by and a desirable addition for any serious Mopar collector. All right, guys, are we done? I'm freezing, it's cold up here. Okay, bye. So far, Dave has done his best to keep Alyssa and Will on the task of installing the drivetrain and the Limelight Superbird. Now they just need to work together to get the rear end in place so they can install the Superbird engine before Mark returns. Oh, you know what else is cool? Just dawned on me. You'll love this. Those are railroad tracks on the other side of that. Have our own little train, little GYC train going up and down there. I want to get me one of them Petticoat Junction pump cars. Remember those? One guy on each side of it doing that, and you're riding down the railroad tracks. Always wanted a train. Not that it's going to be my train, but you know what I'm saying? That's cool, right? That's Stephen King stuff. What are you doing? You guys always Do we need to it widen out? it out a little bit? This is one of those times. Lower it down more. It out. I was going to say, I can loosen up the shackles too if it seems like you can't spread it out wide. Well, we may have a problem over here. Uh, so right now we're trying to get this rear end installed. And let's just say right now, it's not going that good. Yeah, that was happening to me earlier. That. Is that happen over there? That's what happened earlier until I moved it back, so. Okay, get yours in. And get just a couple nuts on it. Okay, you need to still go down, don't you, Alyssa? Yeah. yeah. All right, coming down. Okay, whoa, 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 up, 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 up. We got a shock going on there, huh? Okay. How's there we that? go. Oh, there you go. There we go. All right. That's the way John Wayne would have done it. Oh, there you go. Okay. Well, this is in. You like a virgin get... on prom night. Two nuts oh, in there. Oh, wow. <laughs> you okay? I just was startled by your comment is all. Really? It was really graphic. How was your prom night? Uh, PG-13, I went bowling after. Really? Yeah, I was a good kid. What do you mean by bowling? Uh, like throw a ball at uh, some pins. <laughs> What's your version of bowling? Just curious. Okay. 
Why is it different in different countries or something? I just don't know like why you have to. You, you just have to make everything sexual. <laughs> no? Like a virgin on prom night. Yeah, you'd want to redo your parking lot, re-blacktop it, re-stripe it, make it look nice, get rid of the weeds, stuff like that, clean off the fences, paint the building, caulk the cracks that are in the pillars and stuff like that, make the building look nice, new glass. And really after that, you're just detail, detail, detail. Make sure that it looks the way you want it to look for a 1970s dealership. The cars that are filling our complete parking lot up over there that we can't move around, put those here. And then when they're ready to get moved out, like let's say those are the cars that can run but haven't ran that I've been buying. But with a couple of days of work, they could run. They could get the tires pumped up on them. They get batteries in them. They could f run under their own power. They need complete restorations. But they've been blessed. They're real cars. You know what you're buying when you buy it from Graveyard Motors. Goes into this little service department, gets that work done to it, verified, validated, and then moves out to like the second row. The second row is all the cars that are good project cars that are so hard to find. And when you do find them, they're in another state, which is fine. I'm in, a lot of, in another state for a lot of places that you know that when you come out here, it's already been checked, it's already been validated. That's worth a lot, because you could buy maybe one for a little bit less money in Florida and you're in Washington State. How do you know till it shows up? How many people have told that story that they bought a car sight unseen and they paid the price for it? Here, I will take a thousand pictures for you. I will validate it and I will guarantee you it's what I said. Or I'll write you a check and bring it back. That's right, Honest Marks use cars. Is there anybody looking? Oh. Checking to see if the hay was dry. True or false, the 1966 Street Hemi was the first engine with two inline four barrel carburetors. Think you got this one figured out? Answer coming up after the break. So, was the 1966 Street Hemi the first engine that Chrysler offered with two inline four barrel carburetors? The answer is false. In 1955, the Chrysler 300s had a 331 Hemi with two inline four barrel carburetors. You know, Will Scott, he drives a Chrysler 300, but it's not a 55 and it's not a Hemi. So I'm thinking he's overcompensating for his goofy hats. Look at that baby, huh? Very nice. This is going pretty smooth. It is going really smooth. It's because Mark's not here. Nice. Oh Look my that, gosh. Huh? Sweet. Glad somebody's over here working. Everything went great out there, awesomeness. Looking forward to seeing how that works out. Got back a little bit early, so I am gonna go out and see what the boys are doing. Looks like they're hard at it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, ha ha! Coming down, all right, hold that hose. Okay, all right, right. You got no, the wire here we go. So yeah, the lady, yeah, yeah. that's what Listen, I said. you hold the hose and the wire. You gotta be over here? All right. 70 Superbird Tribute car. Got a good car. shot there, Will. Who's gonna make your dreams come true? That's what I was just out doing. Got a good shot doing. there, buddy. You know yeah, that? I know. That's what I was just out doing. Oh, <laughs> that car lot. There we go. Open it, open it up. You know All why? right, we're good. I want people oh to be God. able to call me. I, <laughs> I don't think Will's really paying attention to what he's doing, so I'm actually doing all the work. Alyssa's wearing this Will's magic hat shirt that she actually wore in SEMA. So of course she's wearing the shirt. It's got him all wound up. He's not paying attention to what he's doing. And I'm doing all the work as always. So there you go. The hair? You have to do Area code. Y'all, I'm coming. Yeah, I'd like to have For a 70 you Super Bird, but I can't afford an original one. They're $300,000. You ruined a perfectly good no shirt. Do you no guys see that back here? Why don't I make you one? Oh, were you watching That's him? what we're doing right were there. Were you guys watching him that do whole I have time? Any of my hair? Yeah, it's on me. Oh, we got her, though, finally. Doing what? Oh, you missed it. Mary? Will. I'm telling the story. Did he really? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> hopefully that car lot works out. That place is going to be perfect. Hopefully, they got that in the background. I just got through looking at that kids. place. Yeah, Ryan got, got it, but he had a bad angle though, didn't you? Uh, every time we drop a car over the engine, there's all kinds of things that can happen. I guess worst case scenario, you're gonna scratch the paint. 
that's always an issue. You know, sometimes you'll catch a brake line, bend a brake line up. Usually that could be repaired, but once you scratch the paint really bad, uh, it's, it involves taking the engine back out and repainting the engine compartment. So that would be the worst case scenario. Watch your head there down, down there. I invented this the move. Um, we're doing good. Doesn't it look like we need we're to, lined up uh -oh, the front hole? Oh. <laughs> you doing? killed the coffee grinder. The we're trying to put in a motor, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> It's a coffee grinder. Okay, coffee we grinder. need to go. The needs Dad, to go. Dad, we're uh, trying to put it in an engine. Move? What it are needs you to doing? Go over that way, like, other than just showing like the coffee sorry. grinder. So you push on the back. You ever heard the phrase "the blind leading the blind"? Down. Don't push those wires. Take Hold on. Down. Hang on a second. You just go this way a little bit. You can just grab the whole tray. Okay, it is kind of impressive that he knows that. He's been over here just messing around and he looks over you for a second and tells us which way he has to go. We were all working just fine, Dad, before you showed up. Three inches, Will, right you there. got that? No, Mark, what is three inches? Is that That's how far this? you have to go That back. looks pretty good. How are you looking now on the sides? They have this side's range kind of issues. Oh, they just been? Hey, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. do you want to help us put this in? Yeah. Or do you just, okay. Rocky, when he's busting those ribs. All right, go ahead. Hey, boy. We got your sister out there. How are you doing? <laughs> what was that? It never ends. All right. Come on down. Come on down. Don't flatter yourself, Mary. Oh, my God. Get down here to put a bolt in. <laughs> what else would you be doing, Mark? Looking good here. Lined up nice. Looking beautiful. I like dropping the, the car actually over the engine and drivetrain so much better. I mean, I'm old school. You know, I was from the days where you had a cherry picker in the garage and you're picking your, your engine up and trying to lure it in in the engine compartment without denting up the firewall. And then you got to mate it to the transmission, hook all that up. This makes it so much easier. I mean, everything's already connected. Everything's already bolted in. You just lower the car over the whole thing. Four bolts in the K member, four bolts in the transmission cross member, done deal. You know, throw your front A arms on and you're done. You got the back one in, Will? No, not yet. You don't have either side in, either no. bolt? I'm a piece of shit. Now, Will, your mother talked to you about cussing on oh. TV. Yep, I have not said the F word at all. Yeah, see, they, 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 they you. Yep, see, you gotta be cussing again. You don't need to cuss to get your point across. Well, sometimes you bring Use it Use vocabulary. Did your parents buy you a vocabulary too? Yep, it came with a diploma. <laughs> Will's parents bought him a diploma. He says that, but he's My the only one that dropped out. My was dead. So here we go again, the normal stories. Uh, the crayons, his dad dying at a young age. We need new stories to talk about. God, dad, yeah. dad, tumor in my foot, eight busted crayons. Trying to make a mini bike run. Hey, check this out. Went down to play pool. All I had was a broomstick and an onion to practice with out in the garage. Good tough times, man. You had a broomstick? Nice. Yeah, I bought it from hey. your sister. <laughs> All right. What's up, Mayor? All right, Dan, go up, bud. So How we've got. Up? Go ahead. All four K-member bolts in and two cross-member bolts for the transmission. So right now, uh, Dave's just raising it up in the air. Oh, then we can go in, tighten down the K-member and the cross-member, and start plumbing out the rest of the bottom of the car. <laughs> See, I wish people were responsible like me. Make sure I'm a businessman. Yep. I don't know where my... Uh... You okay, Mary? <laughs> Go bug Dave. And by the way, I got fan mail the other day, and they, they called you kind of ugly, and um, said that you hit you were off the mark by calling me Nadine, that I look like Daisy Duke. Okay. I'll get the letter if you don't believe me. Oh, I believe you. I have no doubt about it. Does this look ugly? Listen. Sorry, he's going to talk I, Alyssa, poo -poo about me. I need to know. He's going to, if that helps. No. Uh, pushing that down on it. Get a fan and blow on my hair. Well, here we go. There you go. Look at that. Is that ugly? All right, so we've got a drivetrain now in our Plymouth Roadrunner slash Superbird tribute. Before you interrupted me, what I was explaining to our audience at home was that I was out looking at the piece of property <laughs> that's got... going to be Graveyard Motors. Uh, this Mopar dealership, I think, is actually pretty cool. Whether or not he pulls it off is a whole different story. That's. I mean, it took him a number of years to get here and get this built up to what it is right now. So starting a whole other project like that, I think is going to be pretty big. You can order a car. So if you wanted a super bird. Are you moving the metal shop over there? No. The pink so shop? You get, no. It's a sales lot. This is our shop. <laughs> over there. Dave, you need my help? <laughs> Sorry. Oh. I was just going to make some noise. Oh, yeah, you're fine. It doesn't matter. He's not coming anyway. 
<laughs> Rock on, Mary. Oh, we did a lot of work, though. Yeah. We some ass. I yeah. call it I mean, Mary. it went smooth. A lot smoother than it normally does. What are you going to do about it? Usually we have a hard time with You're going to do exactly. in the past. Snap your little chicken neck. Oh All right. You just can't help You're going to do away from Will Fox. Yeah. 1962. Okay. All right. I'll see you later. I'm a month old. All right. right? I came out of the womb with a full head of hair, full row of teeth. I was like an omen. Okay. Before we get our drivetrain installed in the 70 Dodge Challenger, I'm actually going to install the front volants. Our front volants is really easy to install. The only thing you got to really watch out for is chipping paint. If you chip the paint, Will's going to be hot. Uh, in the case of our 70 Dodge Challenger, I was actually uh, able to install the grill, the front volants, and everything on the car before the engine suspension went in. Uh, it makes it a lot easier, and actually I was waiting on those guys to finish the engine suspension, so I was able to get a lot more parts put on the car. So I just got done working on our 1970 Superbird tribute car with Will and Dave. I have to leave now and go get my braces taken off. So I have Royal here who's going to jump in and help my dad, Will and Dave, uh, start working on Darren's car. Oh, that looks pretty nice. Will. Well, look, he's already in there. Look who's here. Hey. hey. What's up, You're on your side already? With our Challenger moving so well through the shop, I want to take a minute and talk about what makes it so rare, so desirable, and one of only 916 built. So let's take a look at the fender tag. Typically reading a tag, you start in the left-hand lower corner and you read to the right, and then you work your way up. The E86 means it's a 440 Magnum. The D21 means it's a heavy-duty four-speed. The JS23 represent that it's a Dodge Challenger in a special price class, meaning it's an RT. And the 23 is a hardtop. The rest of the VIN, the U is a zero and the E. The U, again, represents the 440 Magnum. The zero, the year 1970. And E, that it was built in Los Angeles. We go up just to the next line on the left-hand side. FC7 means it's plum crazy purple. Next to that is the interior code. H means it's a high price class, meaning bucket seats, high back. The R means it's leather inserts. The X9 mean they're black, so we have black leather interior on this car. The next line up, V1X. You'll see that appears twice on the fender tag. We're not sure why on the Los Angeles cars they did that, but they did. That is the code for the black vinyl top. Go next to it, the A33. With the four speed behind the 440, you could have only had an A33 or an A34. The A33 means it's a 3.54 to one Dana track pack car. Slide up to the top and probably the coolest and hardest to find on any other car feature is the V6W, white longitudinal stripe. That's what makes this car so rare. So when I recite these codes off the fender tag, it tells you why that fender tag is so important. Now there's lots of other codes on there. We'll cover those at a later time. These are specifically to what make the car such a low demographic. So I just got done working on our 1970 Superbird tribute car with Will and Dave. I have to leave now and go get my braces taken off. So I have Royal here who's gonna jump in and help my dad, Will and Dave, uh, start working on Darren's car. Oh, that you looks need to pretty go nice. Will. Well, look. He's already in there. Look who's here. Hey, what's up, You're on your side already? Yeah, it's always great to see my buddy Royal. I love him, just like brothers. Uh, the only times I want to kill him the most is when he leaves fuel lines off. Let's hope that doesn't happen today. I'm getting close. Don't stop. <laughs> God, for the love of God, don't stop. That's right there. Oops. Stop. You know what gets sensitive? <laughs> what is wrong with that? <laughs> oh, God, that's. <laughs> now, I want. Can you come over here Ooh. and hit these two? Oh. Oh, <laughs> That was close. Where are you going? What? What are you doing? My alarm went off. Okay, turn it off. It's 2 o'clock. 
Uh, I leave at two because I start at four. I start at four because all of my kids uh, play sports. I have four in high school that play and I have one in middle school. So it literally takes from the time I get off work, go home, get cleaned up. My youngest gets home at 2.45, get him fed, cleaned up and ready to go in his direction. And then once he goes his direction, I try to make sure I catch all my other kids' games that are going on. We have volleyball, track, basketball, football. <clears throat> so it's pretty much just year round. You're not going anywhere, fool. See, that's the difference. That's why he's a painter. That's why he's a painter, and we're the guys that make it all happen over here. That's why when you go to places like SEMA and the shows, everybody wants to know, oh, wow, who built this car together? Who did this? Yeah, it's us. He, he comes in at 1.15 and goes home at 2. Yeah. It's a 45 minute straight pull. It must be tough. Can you answer a question for me? Mm -hmm. What would your husband have to do presumably shortly after 2 p.m. today, that he would drop all the wrenches in the middle of the shop and take off for? Nothing, nothing. That's perfect, thank you very much. All righty, okay, bye-bye. I think Will's cheating on his wife. That's the only reason you'd drop every wrench you had in your hand and take off at two o'clock. Hey everybody, Will's cheating on his wife. The oh is wrong with you guys? These are your questions? No, I'm not cheating on my wife. Dude, that is like the crazy. Mark, why are you trying to break up a happy home? I'm cheating on my wife? What? That's the question? What? Am I cheating on, what, am I cheating on my wife? Well, why is that the, uh, no, I'm not having an affair or cheating on my wife. Uh, now that we have the A33 track pack, Dana rear end, 354 gears installed, we can move to the front of the car and put in the 440 Magnum, 375 horsepower. Clearing everything? Looking good, Rollo. Yeah. As far as our skill levels and experience, really, there's nothing too galactic can go wrong, but you do fear that you're gonna scratch that apron because if, if you scratch the apron, you can't just brush touch it. We can't do that here like you could at a used car lot or something. It means we've gotta take the car back up in the air, remove all the drivetrain out from under it, send it back over to Will. He has to do the paint work on it. Then we have to wet sand and buff the paint work and then bring the car back over. So while it doesn't sound like a, a galactic end to the world, it's still a big setback if we scratch something. Maybe just that way a hair, yeah. Okay, there it's clear, yeah. Uh, once we carefully had the alignment just where it needed to be, we were able to lower the car down the rest of the way, marry all the pieces together, install the 4K member bolts, the transmission cross member bolts, and bam, it's a car again. I think we had a great day. Yeah. And uh, I gotta say, D-Day is an official thing now. That's what I've named it, D-Day. Awesome, I love Last it. Last time I cut the reins loose to somebody, he was also a D. <laughs> it, it just didn't work out as well. I mean, I like that you were able to harness those knuckleheads, and and, and I'm guessing, because I've worked with them before, that yeah. that's, a, that's a task. Tried to. So besides all the, yeah, the school antics and everything else, that him and Alyssa with the spray cans, the spray paint, and the shirt, and all that. Uh, What's that last part? Spray paint? Yeah, spray paint, yeah. Spray paint on her shirt. Now see, if you would have said, what's the worst that could happen? I'd say, ah, you have a hard time finding Will. Alyssa might be up in the office, playing on Google, talking to all of her boy fans out there. Didn't nope. think about spray painting each other. Spray painting, yep. Will literally spray painted your daughter. Graveyard cars, baby, that's how we do it. Well, anyway, great job. Everything looked Thanks, good. Boss. See you next week.